We're here at the XPN Music Film Festival, and before the screening of Of All the Things, we're joined by two of the main roles in this film. Would you guys find introducing yourselves for the cameras? Sure. Dennis Lambert, I'm the subject of the documentary. Uh, Jody Lambert, I am the director and the son of Dennis. You're very well known for a lot of the music you've done. Why did you ultimately choose the title Of All the Things? The crazy thing about uh, the story is that my dad um, was a very prolific songwriter in the 70s and 80s, and he had a, a ton of hits for other artists, but he made one record um, as a solo artist in 1972, and it wasn't very successful over here, but happened to become like iconic in the Philippines. And one song on this album called Of All the Things is basically the Filipino National Valentine's Day anthem. So everybody in the Philippines like loves it and gets married to it, and the fact that that was the name of the song that they loved and, and the expression sort of of all the things to have happened to a guy, you know, at age 60 to find out that he's got this huge career in another place. We just felt that the expression of all the things just really summed up what, you know, the heart of the movie was about. You went and were able to do this concert in the Philippines, you know, so many years after you had... Uh, left uh, music. What was it like to revisit all those old songs and reconnect with the fan base who loved uh, your all of the material you had made? It was an incredible experience. I, I knew for many years that I was popular there, but until you make the commitment and you go, you, you're just sort of thinking about it from uh, from, uh, from an uh, arm's length. It's it's not like being there and experiencing it. When I finally said yes. Uh, my family's urging and Jody's, of course, to, to say, like, go experience what this is like to have fans who know your music and know you as the artist, the guy that, you know, sang these songs. For so many years, I was, in a way, disconnected from the music because I wrote things and handed them off to other artists and they had the success and I was kind of tucked away in the back. So it was great. I had a wonderful time doing it and it's, like, revitalized my life and my career and it's connected me back to the, to the music. What ultimately convinced you to go ahead and do this concert? Well there was a promoter there who back in the early 70s was a DJ and I think he was probably responsible for breaking my album across the country and he was very influential in the early years and, and very persistent throughout the many years that had passed about bringing me there and finally convincing me I should come. A lot of the footage is actually taken you know, in your home and with your family and it feels very intimate at times. Was that an intentional decision to really personalize a lot of the story and, and really uh, bring you in on your family dynamic to an extent? I think knowing that his son is behind the camera and, and, and our crew and producers um, was my best friend. I think you you know that the people making the movie are have a real investment in this story, and it's not just like we found a subject and decided to go make a film. And I think, you know, that element of it makes it a little more personal, which makes it I think something that people connect to because they know that, you know, we have the the filmmakers have a real deep connection to what's happening. Also, the film shows you working with a lot of uh, native musicians for your songs, uh, wh what was, was there any sort of lost in translation mo uh, elements for you? Not really, no. I was told by a lot of my friends who had toured the Philippines that if I wound up using local musicians and singers, I wouldn't be disappointed that they're very talented and, and they'll work hard and they'll be prepared and when you get there, they'll have your material down and how you want to tweak it is the small part, the easy part. And that's what I experienced. They were they were great, and uh, we did it in the end in a kind of hybrid form because we added dates onto the tour at the somewhat eleventh hour, and it made it difficult to carry an entire band everywhere we traveled. So we had to tighten it up and do it a different way. But it was fun, and we did have uh, some great local people involved in the concerts too. So uh, thanks to the film, what's what's next for you know your music career and what's next for the film? What, what's coming up in the life of your? Uh, cr yeah, I'll let Jody speak to the <laughs> film. As far as I'm concerned, uh, I've been performing a lot live since I went there. A lot of opportunities have presented themselves, and I've been taking advantage of it in different forms, and from a full-size band to just playing acoustically alone. 
um, in different venues, Joe's Pub in New York, uh, the Viper Room in L.A., the Knitting Factory, the Bluebird Cafe in Nashville. Last year I did a series of shows in pretty big venues, 2,000-seat venues, and I brought some of the uh, artists who had made my songs successful to accompany me and be sort of the stars of the show alongside of me. So I did a couple of shows with Tavares, the Starship, and Player, and that was a lot of fun. And, uh, and then uh, I've been working on a musical for Broadway with Brian Potter, my collaborator for many years. And there are some interesting things going on with the film, which Jody can speak to. Uh, yeah, the film continues to um, you know play in festivals and uh, we're working towards finally putting it out on uh, on DVD and in theaters probably by the end of the year. Uh, we have uh, in the works a, a remake of the movie um, set up at a Hollywood studio with Steve Carell um, attached to play Dennis in the sort of fictionalized version uh, of the story. So we'll see how that you know kind of plays out. And, um, and then I, uh, I co-wrote um, a movie that's coming out at the end of June called People Like Us. Um, it was directed by Alex Kurtzman, who's one of the guys who wrote Transformers and Star Trek. And uh, it's a very different kind of movie for him. It's a family drama, and it stars Chris Pine and Elizabeth Banks, and Michelle Pfeiffer, and Olivia Wilde. So, um, you know, hoping that that comes out and, and does pretty well. So that's sort of the next chapter. For me. Oh, uh, I guess I wanted to I mentioned, uh, what does it feel like to possibly be the subject of a new narrow narrative film and having Steve Carell <laughs> jump into your persona? It's pretty, pretty crazy, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. We, we thought when we, when we saw the finished film that, you know, it would have a, 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 a kind of an appeal, a uh, strangely uh, interesting kind of story that um, the way it was shaped in the end as a film somebody might like it and the studios were interested in it right from the the start you know once they saw that we were playing in festivals and it was winning awards and audiences were really enjoying it but to to see it actually in active development with a big star like Steve Carell is a little crazy we're just hoping that you know it stays on track and and that it turns out to be a uh, a, a faithful retelling of the story because we we kind of are fond of it, you know. <laughs> yeah. I didn't sing in the New York subway. I didn't pay on my New York to E flat F. That's how I phrase that. Mountain, right. Just to be here on a foggy mountain. Uh, hi, I'm director Jody Lambert. I'm Dennis Lambert, subject of the documentary of all the things. And you're watching the pretentious film majors and they are nothing if not totally pretentious. <laughs>